Hey guys, um, I'd like to welcome you to today's Art Talk episode. Uh, this is ways that you could improve your art. And I do want everyone to know I practice what I preach. <laughs> I'll follow my own advice. Um, so let's get started. One of the first things that you could do that might help you improve your art is to draw from life. In other words, draw what you see. I'm talking about mundane things like jars, cups, uh, vases, stuffed animals, chairs, you know, trees, um, and even shade in the right places, how you see it. Even draw things from different angles, like if you get a flower vase or a little statue or something, it draw it from different angles, like from a bird's eye view, from a side view, from a looking up view. Um, that doing things like that, it, it trains your eye and causes you to have muscle memory. Um, and once you started doing that, you would understand what I mean by muscle memory. Um, that's one of those things that's kind of hard to explain. Um, and another question that I sometimes get is, well, what if I want to draw from my mind and don't use any reference pictures? Well, that's fine. I do that with my cartoons and stuff, but Guys, it's hard until you train your eye with some of that muscle memory. And in order to get to that point, I also had to draw real life um, items to be able to apply those skills. In other words, like all my little fairies and stuff like that, well, they're human. <laughs> looking. So I had to draw real life photos, you know, or draw from real life. Like when my kids were smaller, I would get them to pose in a position and I would sit there and sketch them out roughly. You know, seeing it in real life is different than when you look at it flat, you know, like on a monitor or anything like that when you draw from 3d in real life it really does improve your skills and mo the majority of the poses that I have my fairies and stuff in is taken from pictures that I took of my kids years ago um, and which brings me to my next topic um, and I have started doing this as with this swan painting that I was working on right here. Um, draw things that you're weak at or that you don't want to. Um, even if you have to trace it a couple of times because that's where that muscle memory and that trains your eye and that muscle memory comes into play. Um, because if you trace something multiple times um, that will stick in your memory and it's training your eye how to draw it properly and correctly because the basis of any good painting guys it all starts with a good sketch I spend more time sketching sketching's the hard part you know getting it just the way I want it but I was um, yeah every one of my fans or most of you know that I typically don't paint and draw wildlife and things like that. I'm kind of in a fairy fantasy mode. But um, as I said, I practice I practice what I preach. Um, even I love swans. Um, I love hummingbirds and dolphins. But I don't 
want to paint those or draw those, but um, I do. I do because that is forcing me to improve my own art by drawing things that I don't want to or that I'm weak at. Um, it really does. It really does help because even though I did this swan and that's not typically something that I draw or paint, it um, I put my fantasy appeal to it, or I think I did, <laughs> and I ended up really liking this little painting a lot, you know. Um, but it does really start with a good sketch. If you've got your sketch down, it the painting will go much smoother. The painting's the fun part. And I also want to just say something right here. When you're just sketching, don't don't think that everything that you sketch you're going to turn into a painting masterpiece because you're not. You just everyone needs to spend a little bit of time doodling and sketching. No, with no plans on painting that. That is just to improve your skills, not to really paint. And here I, here I want to say this too. Um, if, if you still can't draw even from like real life sketches, it, you just think that's really too hard. I know that pencil that you want to sketch that's laying there, you might think, oh, well, that is still too hard. I can't draw that. Well, it's time to get you some tracing paper and trace and trace and trace. Even if you like to do landscapes, get a magazine that's got a bunch of landscapes and stuff in it and get your tracing paper and just trace and trace and trace it. Um, because that trains your eye to see it accurately. That is how I first learned to start drawing when I was a child, is those trace, uh, tracing paint books. Um, and it really does work. If you trace like one thing, like over and over and over, like say that swan that's on this paint, and if I trace that over and over and over again, probably by about the seventh time, I could freehand that because when you trace something, that puts that into your muscle memory in your brain because it's training your eye and the muscle memory goes hand in hand. And lastly, keep a sketchbook and always date everything that you sketch um, and then put it away and then, you know, keep sketching and then take it out about two, three, four months later, and you will really be able to see how you have grown as an artist. And that's all I have to say today in this episode. So thanks for stopping by. Talk to you soon.